Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Check the link in the description box below for two free premium months. Are you kidding me? I broke the needle. How does this happen? Hey Greens, welcome to my newest obsession, which is customizing My Little Pony figurines. For those of you who don't know, I have two previous episodes. One of them is Disney themed and the other two, I won't say what they are, but I'll link them down below if you want to check them out. Today we're doing something really different. I have ginormous ponies. Not not just your little pony. These ones are not my little pony. These are, these are my gigantic ponies. They should change the name from my little to my gigantic. They're huge. For those of you who want to say, Jakey, it's still pretty tiny. Stop it. Stop it. If you want to see a comparison of these ponies next to the ones that I have customized so far, here's the difference. Look at it. Wow. That's what I want to say. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Oh, you're, you're quite the big one, aren't you? You're basically small enough to be my pet. Eep. It's definitely a little intimidating just because it's like, it's not, it's not little, it's big. How many times do I have to keep telling you that it's big? If they make ponies bigger than this one, I mean like My Little Ponies bigger than this one, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to find the biggest My Little Pony and customize the horse out of it. What am I even saying? I do have a little bit of a dilemma. Do I want to take Princess Celestia, who I've never done before in a video and customization, but she has a lot of glitter and I know that's gonna be a big pain in the bum to clear up, but there's no art without pain. Or do I want to take Rainbow Dash? I've done a customization of Rainbow Dash, but I feel like the head on this one is softer, so we might have a better chance at actually removing the head and possibly changing the hair, since I can't really squeeze Princess Celestia's head until after we open it. And when I open it, I wanna commit. There's no going back, no going back. When you commit, you go 100%. Stop making noise! I think I'm gonna go with Princess Celestia, just because I haven't done her before. Let me know in the comment section below which one of these My Little Pony figurines do you want to see me customize? Some of them have some weird poses, and some of them even have a print on them. I feel like that's going to be a whole challenge on its own. All right, time to see what we get inside. Clear, this is going to be my first time ever doing a full custom. I've never done hair rerouting and I've never done a full face up. So please give me good vibes. And so here is Princess Celestia full of glitter. I kid you not, Grains, look at the amount of glitter that comes off just by smacking her gently on the table. Is there such a thing as smacking gently? It's like very gentle. You can barely feel it. Here's my rendition of gently smacking on the table. You see that? Glitter's just falling all over the place. And if that's not convincing enough, all I have to do is just touch the wings, like so, and my fingers are full of glitter. Holy carp, that's going to be a, it's, it's gonna be a nightmare, isn't it? Yes, it is. She also has glitter right over her eyes and her horn. So I'm really curious how we're going to be able to remove it, so. The other thing that bothers me on this pony figurine is the fact that the body looks like a styrofoam cup. It bothers me to a whole new level. Just, just imagine the texture of styrofoam and it's, it's her body. So I'm not sure where they're going with this. But the good news is she's pretty flexible and her head, ooh, her head is really soft. Look at that. Which means in theory, it should be okay for me to change the hair color. Can we remove the head? Yes, I think. I don't want to do it yet. By the way, for those of you new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, otherwise I will wave a sharp pointy thing at you. It seems scary at first, but you'll get used to it. <laughs> and while you're there, make sure you click on all notifications. And also, welcome to all the new subscribers. Sub sub subscribers. Welcome to all the new subscribers. All right, so before we assess the situation of the head removal, for some reason we have this weird plasticky thing that's near her hair, and I just, I can't, I can't pull it off, or can I? No. And it seems like the only way I can remove this is through these tiny little threads. I don't know if you grains can see this. Let's to cut these tiny threads each one at a time. That's okay. They give me tiny threads. Well, I have tiny scissors. And ta-da. All right, get out of here. 
And so naturally, the first thing I wanted to do was remove that glitter. So I took one of my old beat up containers, and yes, I know, it looks like there was at some point spaghetti sauce in there. Ew, that's gross. Don't pretend like you don't have your own stained containers at home, okay? I'm just a person. So I put in a mixture of warm water and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I don't know if that's a thing, but let's just pretend it is. Soak it in there and hopefully it'll come out. So I spent the next 30 minutes scraping off the glitter. Oh my god, that is not a fun thing to do. I would highly not recommend this activity. Just look at all this mess. So much mess. I got it on my pants, on my fingers and all of them will flow. This is the best I could do simply because some of the glitter is actually in the plastic so I really can't get in there. So in order to get rid of the hair, we have to remove the head from the body. I am really nervous about this part because many of you grains told me to watch Manda Panda, but never do we see her put it back together. So I'm wondering if she ends up removing the head and just glues it back together. Oh my god, that is, that is quite funny. Holy moly! Think we're getting somewhere? Come on! Oh, oh, that was that was quite the workout. I am not happy about this part because once we go there, there's no turning back. Not no time to say I wish I hadn't done that. I'm suddenly, actually pretty scared. Oh uh, no! And here, here it goes. I am not happy about this. I am not. I am not happy about this. Once it's cut, it's done. It's done. And so I went ahead and removed the remainder of the hair and tried to see if I could pull out whatever was left on the inside. In case some of you were wondering, I 100% have to follow some of the instructions that were given by my friend Delightful because she does amazing customs and this feels like something that she would easily cut. I mean, it's pretty soft. Technique works. So thank you, Delightful. And when it comes to the tail, I just chopped it off and did what needed to be done. Now this bit I got from Manda Panda about removing the tail. Oh, there's a washer. Come here. Come here. There. And now that the head and hair have been removed, it kind of looks like a crime scene, but you know, as Delightful says, this hobby gets a little interesting. For my favorite part of customizing, which is the actual epoxy clay. Epoxy clay is a two-part modeling compound that when you mix A and B equal parts, you can sculpt with it and then it hardens like a rock. I definitely wouldn't recommend epoxy clay for beginners who don't have protective equipment or young people. I think the Sugru that Manda Panda uses is probably a safer alternative. ahead and used a toothpick with some glue in order to start making the horns. For those of you who like things that are symmetrical, that was the opposite of what I was trying to do. So I'm, ch I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you like things symmetrical. I technically don't. Is that a glitter? Oh my god. You are not welcome here. As you can guess by now, I am going with a theme of fantasy. I'm not turning her into a deer, but I'm thinking more along the lines of an elemental dragon type. But she's still equestrian, so she's like a horsey dragon earth the creature kind of thing. I really do like how the head looks like so far and adding a tiny little bit of scales on the cheek will give me a better idea when I start painting the face where the eyes should go. Here comes the almighty pasta machine. In order to give it a little bit more of that dragon feel, I decided to do the underbelly kind of like, you know, the snakes underbelly kind of thing. Are you kidding me? Another glitter. Please get out of here again. And then little tufts of armor up behind the legs. Army, good. Can you not? Please. Can you not? What is your favorite element? I think to match my personality, my element would have to be fire because I am I am very fiery and I, I have this this heated. I'm, I'm very passionate. Okay, let's just say fire is my thing. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, I decided to add a little bit more scales on the body. So far, she is looking really cool. I think the paint job is going to really make this stand out. And the hair, and the eyes. Oh, the, the, oh, I am, I am so worried. <laughs> I was like, I got this, this is sculpted, this is so good. And then, and then I have to do all the doll stuff, yeah. Now with the epoxy clay, we have to wait six hours for it to harden. You know what that means. Let's put our hands together. 
and pray to the drying gods. Dear drying gods of Evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, fallen limbs, and lack of stickiness. And also, it's the break of my stuff! Six and a half hours later. And so what have the drying gods done? They have blessed us. As you can see, the pieces still are on there. I'm not sure if they're going to stay on there when we try and paint them, but I guess that's something we're going to find out. All right, time to go split screen. Let's talk about color palettes. There are so many different colors that could represent a forest. And I feel like part of me really wanted to do dark colors simply because that's natural for me to want to go to dark. Because, you know, in my heart, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> So the first one that I found while browsing for forest color palettes is this beautiful type of wood bark. And it has everything from dark greens to dark blues, and I do have similar hair color to that brown right on top. The next palette is much lighter than I am used to, so part of me is like, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. But I feel like this is this this may be the one I will go with. Let's let's talk about it first. What I like about this palette is that the lightest color is a is, is a greenish white, which feels like it would feel like it which would feel like it feels. Wow, English. Wow, very very nice. Very very nice vocabulary. <laughs> which would feel like a natural color for a horse or pony body. And I do have a similar hair color to the far right green. And then last but not least, I, I'm not sure if I like this one. This is the third palette. The only reason I chose this one to consider is because of the purplish color that is there. And I do have something similar for hair, but I don't think I'm gonna go with that one. Out of the three color palettes, let me know which one you like the most. Is it number one, number two, or number three? And so before we begin, doing any kind of painting, I went ahead and gessoed our pony. This is going to give us a base that sticks to the body, that way it doesn't rub off too easy. And just to make sure that the glitter doesn't, doesn't start moving all over the place, I definitely gave it three coats. I I'm very well aware I am not a genius. Good job. And um, I did do the armors over here, but um, looks like I skipped a leg. You know how they say don't skip leg day? Obviously I did. So I'm going to have to put a new one and wait another six hours because that's the genius I am. And so now, time for airbrushing. a brush and acrylic paints in order to paint my pieces, but ever since I discovered airbrushing, it has helped me level up my paintings and my sculptures to a whole new level. Instead of having to do gradients by hand, because that's not something I have talent in, just using the airbrush makes it so that pieces and colors flow into each other. Also, colors aren't flat, so we get to have more dimension, and the pieces start looking a little more realistic. So as you can see, I went with a very light, almost white, green for the body so that everything else around it pretty much becomes the accent color. The idea is that we're going with an elementally forest type pony. That's somewhat of a dragon. It's, it's like a dragon pony deer forest creature. <laughs> and yes, at this point I'm getting leafy on vibes. No, chicken is keeping me company, right? Why aren't you saying anything? Say hi. Oh, you are so rude. Now we're getting into the real stuff. Painting it, easy. Putting clay on it, easy. But now to do a face up, not so easy. I did take a close up picture of her eyes. I think I want to keep the exact same shape, except the only thing I'm going to change is the eye color, and I think I'm going to go with red. Hear me out, because some of you might want to say, But Jackie, she's not an evil creature of darkness, this is a forest spirit. I know, but red will definitely stand out and make her more mystical. And that is exactly what I tell myself to fall asleep at night. And so unlike most face-ups that are probably the right way that use watercolor pencils, I decided to go with the acrylic airbrush paints. The reason I decided to go for these is because they are really 
thin and they really go on really flat. So unlike normal acrylic paint that can get gloopy gloopy, I feel like this is quite similar to watercolor pencils. So pretty much all I did was build up and up and up until I was happy with the opacity. really impressed that I was able to get the face as close as possible. Mind you, I did cheat a little bit because I didn't fully gesso the eyes on purpose so I can kind of, you know, trace it. Don't pretend you never trace, dang it. <laughs> but at this point, I really have nothing to help me because it's time for hair. The color I have is called Medusa and I feel like this would be the perfect color. So let's go ahead and try. I, I tried to watch quite a few videos. I watched my friend Delightful. Oh, that is smooth. Oh, that is so pretty. How would I look? Uh, yes, I have quite the monster. <laughs> How would I look with green hair? Like, I think with that, is this, is this too much? This is so smooth. Oh, wow. Oh, I like, I like it. Don't ever let anyone tell you that I'm not easily distracted. And the other video I watched is by Maria Lazar. But from what I can tell is that it's easiest to start from the back and make our way forward. So I'm going to go ahead and try rerouting in the exact same holes. No idea what I'm doing. Is this too big? That's okay. I'm gonna start somewhere. Even though I'm very nervous, we're gonna start somewhere. So I'm gonna lay you here like a so. This hair is nice. Very nice. I don't know how much I'm supposed to take. Like this much? It always seems like they don't take much. I'm gonna take this much. Maybe that's too much. Ah! Oh my god, too frizzy! Stop, stop it. I feel like this is too much. Let's try anyways. <laughs> so according to the tutorials, I take the longer part and kind of just scoop. Do this. Am I stabbing myself? Do the scoopies like this. Okay. I feel like this might be a little too much hair. <laughs> it's okay. We'll start somewhere. And then we go through the hole over here. Please don't break. Please don't. Please don't break. Okay. In and out. <gasps> it worked! Oh my god! Cranes! It worked! <laughs> uh, what? Oh, that was, that was nice. Okay, let's go ahead and do more. I did tie these with a plier to make sure that it was it was good in there. And you can see the hair is on the inside. We're definitely going to have to glue it, but let's go ahead and put a full set of hair first. And now this happened. I feel like I really, look at this. It's really tight, but for some reason, just keeps wanting to come out. For those of you who know why, please let me know why this is happening. So just on my third hole, I, um, I broke the needle and I bent it. So here's the try to. I really have no idea why is this breaking? This is not a hard head. I mean, it's pretty soft. Why is this not working? I, I, I broke the needle. This is why. <laughs> I legitimate, look at this. The needle's in here and the needle's in here. So maybe it's sticking out too much. Oh my God. Look, soft, soft, okay? It's soft. Attempt number three, I am going to make it protrude a lot less. Here we go. Please work, please. There's the hole, come on. There we go. And broke another one. I'm literally on my last needle. If this breaks, then I'm going to have to go one size bigger. Don't break. There. And the answer is yes, I broke it again. At this point, I don't understand anymore, and I am so close to giving up. Just so close. Why? Are these needles just bad quality, or do I have bad technique? Brains, I don't even know what to do anymore. I am tired, I am cranky, and I am, I am this, this close to giving up on the hair. So I've been able to do about this much and I am absolutely on the last needle. I went online and checked the main reasons that the needle would break would be either because the head is too hard, which in this case it's not, and the other reason is putting too much hair. So as you can see, I've been putting fewer and fewer hairs, but it's still breaking. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, it's, it's the last needle and I need to put hair. I don't wanna have to start making like these little tufts and then gluing it on. That's it's not horse horse hair. It's a human. 
I don't know what to do anymore. It's my last needle and the closest one is like two weeks away. Let's just do it. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> And so even though I may have had more energy than the needles did, I figured it was time to try the other method. I think it's called the tuft method? I'm not sure. Basically putting glue on the hair and then gluing the hair directly on the scalp. I have no idea if it's gonna work, so let's wait overnight and see what happens. Tomorrow. And so basically what I did was start gluing the tufts of hair on the head. Even though technically we started in a vertical way, I figured I'd continue horizontally just because I have no idea how to put it vertically. <laughs> Again, I have no idea if I'm doing this right, so for those of you who want to say Jakey, you're doing it wrong! I know! I know! I'm just learning! And plan A ruined me, and I had no plans for plan B, but I went with plan B anyways. And I did decide to style it just a little bit to make it a little more wild and floofy. Cause, I mean, she is a forest creature, so wild is definitely the way to go. After arranging the hair, let's take a couple of seconds to remember how hard it was to remove the piece. The, he the head- Oh my god, that is- that is quite- <laughs> So I figured I'd chop it down before trying again. Ooh, got it. The only thing left now is to actually put the tail in. Me, good. Here she is. I am so happy with my first ever full doll makeover, the doll customization. The part I was really nervous about was the hair, and I feel like I had ample justification to sit to, to do so. The hair is still not perfect. I am very well aware of that. If I had more time to prepare for it, I would definitely have made it more luscious. Here she is, side by side, as you can see. Pause this video. Today we have a sponsor, Skillshare. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna make myself very little and, and I'm just gonna go in the corner down here. For those of you who don't know Skillshare, they are a huge supporter of this channel, so thank you very much. I very appreciate it. Skillshare is an online learning community where creatives like you and I get together in the millions in order to work on your creative love and passions. So whether you're a beginner, a master, or just dabbling into something new, you'll find many interesting topics to keep you just salivating over all the new knowledge. Topics such as fine art, crafting, filmmaking and video. And in my case, last week, I absolutely needed to learn more about doll making. So I followed Alia Rahman, Creature Features, Unforgettable Facial Features for Doll Making Beginners. If you haven't seen last week's video, I will link it down below. I took a shot at making facial feature type dolls. And this video really helped me. And also my good friend Jazza has his own masterclass on Skillshare, which is called Mastering Illustration sketching, inking, and color essentials. We're proud of you, Jazza. What I love about Skillshare is that it's not just classes. It's a combination of videos, but also class projects. So there's a section where you can talk about the project and even show your finished piece. So it really has this sense of community. With everything going on, it's really easy to forget ourselves. So please make sure that you grains take the time to be creative as a form of self-care. And with that said, you can get two free months of Skillshare Premium. So the first 1,000 grains to click the link in the description box below, get a free trial, again, two months, so that you can explore your creativity and see what it's all about. The fuss is worth it. Thank you Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. All right, hang on, I'm gonna just go down here and then we're gonna start the video. Go. If you want to watch the previous pony customization, check up here. And if you want to watch a cash or trash review, make sure you check down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.